Hey there, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Speaker Builder channel. My name is Jeff, and today I want to begin a multi-part video series on building a high-fidelity music reproduction system. And by that, I mean two-channel stereo, as you see here. The focus of this series is going to be on design decisions versus specific component recommendations. Uh, and this information, I hope, will really be really important for those who wish to either build a system from scratch, as I've done here, or even for those folks who are choosing and assembling various factory components. Understanding the design decisions that went into those components would be helpful. Now, mostly I'm going to be focusing on the speakers. Of course, this is the Speaker Builder channel, so I would naturally do that. Now, I've been encouraged to start this video series for two reasons. First, because of the success I've had in, in modifications I've made to the top of the mountain system. Now, that is very similar to this one down here. The top of the mountain system is upstairs. It is a, also a three-way active speaker system, or a triamp system is another name. And in 15 years ago, when I first put that together, I virtually just threw a bunch of components together and then adjusted them for uh, uh, frequency response balance and then was satisfied with it and very thrilled with it for a long time. But I came to realize over time that the components that I threw together probably weren't working together as well as they could. And I had never really challenged any of those decisions I made. Now, in terms of this video series, we're talking about design decisions. Those I stand by in that system upstairs and in this one down here. So what I'm referring to here is the decisions about the various components and getting them to all work together well. And that is really kind of a separate issue. But nonetheless, having tweaked that system upstairs and had a great deal of success with that, I'm very pleased now with what I've come up with that I feel confident that I can really talk about system uh, design. And second of all, the second reason for that is the success of this new system. Now what this involves is a bunch of leftover parts that I've had sitting around. The tweeters and mid-range drivers I bought as spares for the system upstairs. And they sat in boxes for 10 years and I decided I could press those into service into a new Triumph system. I had these bass speakers, these 10 inch drivers that were pretty good and I was thought would work out well. They've worked out fantastically. Uh, I had a number of electronic components. Some of them now here are 30 years old and they still work great. And so uh, all I really had to do, I even had the speaker wire. All I had to do is build boxes and I built those stands for these, the, the, uh, for the satellite speakers. So, and I even didn't want to spend a lot of money on the boxes. So I uh, chose uh, oak laminated plywood I wouldn't probably do that again, but they came out, they look real good, so, uh, and they came out pretty good. I think they worked out fine. Now, when I was finished putting this system together, I discovered it just wasn't rising up to the level of quality that I was hoping for. And I had to for, try to figure that out, why not? And I decided it was probably the electronic crossover I was using at the time was not of, uh, it was kind of a sacrifice. I didn't want to buy or build a new electronic crossover. So I was using what I had. So I decided in order to get the system up to speed, I needed a new electronic crossover. So that brings us up to my last video that I did now three years ago, titled, uh, I believe it was called Building Electronic Crossovers. And that component is here, the top right component in this system. That really made all the difference and brought the system up to speed. And then I've made some other adjustments as I've done with the system upstairs to bring this Again, involving not so much design, but component selection to get the components to work together best. The MOSFET amp that I built from a Rotel amp from the second to last video I did is here, the bottom right component. That made a big difference to the mid-range uh, character. And so with the success of this system, I'm really encouraged now. I think I can, with confidence, present all this to folks out there and say, this is how to build a, at least in terms of design decisions, this is what I really want to focus on. Now, every design decision you make, especially with regarding speakers, involves some kind of compromise. There's a set of benefits to this one decision and drawbacks that go with that decision, or an alternate decision will have different set of benefits and drawbacks, even opposite ones. So uh, my first goal in this series is to really explain those design decisions in terms of those two, the benefits versus drawbacks, so that whatever system you have or whatever system you're trying to build, 
you recognize what a, that there's no win-win in decision making in this in this field. At least not many that I could find. It's always some benefit and drawback. Uh, and the second goal is to inform folks about the various compromises, especially regarding speakers, that are inherent in factory speakers. And if you understand those, then you can say, okay, well, I choose to accept those sacrifices in quality for the convenience of a, fact, of a passive speaker or whatever the, whatever the sacrifices are. There are a number of them, and we'll talk about them as we go. Uh, so that you understand what those are, so that you can recognize them and accept them, or to say, and I, wanna, I'm, I want something more, and I'm willing to sacrifice convenience or cost or whatever it is for maybe higher quality. This system here it pretty much has been leaning toward the quality and no holds barred on the other uh, sacrifices that you have to make for that. So um, uh, there are limits to that. And so now that brings me to number four in my list here of things to talk about. The first decision in terms of uh, design has to do with cost versus quality. There's always a cost limit to things. Generally speaking, the greater the expense, the greater the quality. That's a generalization, though. It doesn't apply to all things. There is a law of diminishing returns by which you get to a point where you spent so much money and then beyond that, increasing higher amounts of money doesn't necessarily get you much more quality. Or to get that higher quality, you've got to spend really extraordinary amount, greater amounts of money. So uh, in this case... Uh, I have built a three-way active system like this. I gave that system on my nephew. I have a video series on that. I call it Satellite Subwoofer Speakers. I spent about $1,000 on the components for that system, and that was budget. And I think we spent $200 for the uh, Onkyo receiver, which operates, functions as a uh, preamp in that system. But uh, So 12, for $1,200, you get a complete system, and that was on the budget side. Uh, this system here, if I were to duplicate this, would be in the 5,000 to 10,000 range. I can't find good quality amps that are small money anymore. Everything's more expensive and class D and all that. But anyway, so it might be a little more than 5,000. But we're in the 5 to 10,000 range. Now, if you get into tens of thousands of dollars, to me, first of all, that's just crazy money. I, don't, I wouldn't be willing to spend so much money on a system. But you really have to get into real crazy money to get way, way up there. And there is definitely higher levels to go from what I've done here, but at just crazy cost. Now, we're going to be starting with speakers, as I've mentioned. This is the Speaker Builder channel, after all. And uh, first of all, the speakers have the greatest impact on the overall sound quality of a system. So they are really the most important. If you have factory speakers at a full range, no matter what electronics you put up to those speakers, they're always going to sound like those speakers. They sort of establish the character of the sound of your system. So that's why they're so important. Second of all, they have the most difficult job to perform of all the other electronics. I mean, very simple to modify and uh, manage an electronic signal that represents your music. But once that gets out to the speakers, that electronic signal has to be transferred into pressure waves on the air. And that's where it gets really complicated and difficult. And so for that reason, speakers face the most difficult task of converting that audio signal into pressure waves. So that's why they're so important. Now, all speaker systems involve three parts. Basically, the drivers, the crossover, and the box or boxes. So the next three videos, parts one, two, and three, are going to involve driver selection issues, first of all, crossover design issues, second of all, and box design issues, third of all. Now, these decisions, I'm taking them in this order, drivers and crossover, then box, but really those decisions you have to think about systemically all kind of all at once, rather than just think about this decision and then move on to the next one and the next one. When I'm putting a system together, I'm thinking about all of them at the same time, but I have to teach them one at a time, as is the case with, uh, with the written word or the spoken word, you got to stay one thing at a time. So I'm going to present them in a linear way, one after another. But of course, we have to remember they're all sort of thought of together collectively. And each decision affects other decisions you make. Now, one thing I want to mention 
Uh, before I finish up today, we've got just a couple other things. I want to talk about some of the other videos I'll include. I talked about the first three, and then I've got some others to do. Let me actually go ahead and do that. I'm gonna, I want to do a, another video in, on interconnects. Uh, I haven't beat that horse to death yet. I've done two or three of them on interconnects now. But I'm going to revisit that, and I'm going to demonstrate to you all through a video the importance of difference that interconnects make. So I promise that for you all. Uh, I'm not going to say any more about that, but I have a, a way to do that that's going to absolutely close the mouth of those skeptics who say interconnects don't matter at all. I'm convinced I can do that. But anyway, uh, I might revisit SpeakerWire. I have a video on power cables. I took on the task of tackling the power cables thing, the controversy, whatever, to see if I can make better quality power cables. And I went through that whole process. So I will do a video on that, on everything that I did there. Uh, I do need to make a video on A-B testing. Very important in there, some really controversial issues around that. And for most of us, like myself, I've got to do my A-B testing alone. I can't have, I don't have someone else to help me with that. So this, I can't do any blind testing. Uh, there's a way, a workaround to uh, some of the bias that's inherent in A-B testing of components. So I'm going to do a video on that and talk about that. But now lastly, I want to address, since I'm down here, and we are in this space, I want to talk a little bit about uh, room issues. I am going to do, uh, lastly, a video on room issues. And I want to just up front say just how important the room is. Now, in my top of the mountain system upstairs, if you watch that video, you see that system inside the living room upstairs that's stuffed with furniture and the coffee table and the TV and the piano and all the stuff that's in that room and it was just so congested with stuff. There was no way that I could do anything about the room. Uh, now the three room issues involve the, the dimension, the room layout, meaning dimensions and, and symmetry. Second of all, room treatment, absorption and diffusion panels are what's mostly involved in room treatment. And then third of all, speaker placement, the location of the base speakers and the location of the satellite speakers here that are need to be placed independently for the different reasons, for flat bass response, I'll mention, and then for soundstage. Now, I could not do anything about that upstairs. Any, any one of those three, I could not tackle. And you really need to tackle all three of these. If you miss one, then you're not gonna get the benefit of the other two. So you gotta be doing all three. And I'm just referring to this briefly. I'll do, a, again, a whole video on this, but I mention that because uh, when, when I finished putting this system together down here, and it's part of my uh, part of my introduction here today was to document this room down here. What happened was because I had this system sounding so good, I had an opportunity down here in this space to address these room issues, and I had no experience with it. So three years ago, I began that, and one of the things I did, if I'm going to move my camera over, and you're going to see this wall to the left, it's no longer treated. I've taken all the treatment out. I'm, I'm finished with my experimentations down here, but you see that wall to the left is uh, I put up to create this space down here that is now 12 feet across, and it's ideally would be 16 and a half feet deep. It's 19 feet deep, so it's in that ballpark, and it's about seven, seven and a half inch ceiling. So uh, that 12 by 16 and a half by seven and a half is ideally, ideally dimensioned for a listening room. And that's probably similar to the size rooms that you might all have. So I hope that's an encouragement. And so I had the opportunity to create this space. I had a lot of other stuff down here. I've used this space for a lot of other things in the past, but building this wall and putting everything else in the other half, because that this room extends another 12 feet beyond that wall to the left. So everything else in this downstairs family room is over there in that, in that space. And this space I dedicated just for listening. For, as a music listening room and that meant and I had those that you see here in this I had those uh, I don't know what you call them little stand tables whatever with the lamps on them I had them actually in back in a different place but uh, I set this up as a listening room and tried it in several different locations uh, on the along the short wall first again along the long wall to the right which is over here and then again along the short wall th for, the, for the third attempt and that's when I had success in getting the flat bass response and the nice uh, sound stage from the speakers. So now I've placed these speakers roughly in the location they were in when I was finished with all that. 
And um, I've now wrapped up all that uh, experimentation that I was doing down here. This was basically a for a period of time of a couple of years of just a grand hi-fi laboratory in which I was able to experiment with uh, the speaker placement, the room treatment, and so forth. I did build a bunch of uh, absorption panels and diffusion panels. I've taken the diffusion panels down now because my work is done down here, but uh, I only mention all of this because it requires a lot of a specialized room, I think, if you're going to have a hi-fi system. You need a room to put it in that's going to be you're going to be able to set up with these room issue, with addressing these three room issues, or else you're going to really miss out on a whole lot, as I had for many years missed out on, because I just didn't have a room to do it in. Now, for the past three years, it really started two and a half years ago, I began a project to rebuild my house, and that included putting a 600 square foot addition onto the house, and 320 square feet of that is a new living room, which has become my new sound room. So it's a living room, it's a sound room, and I also yeah, I can watch movies in there or whatever, but uh, mostly the living room and a sound room. And as a music room, it is incredible. And I've designed it specifically, dimensionally, for sound, and I've had a second chance to, uh, having had all the experience down here with this laboratory down here, in which I was able to tr fool around with all the different room issues, and find some success down here. I had that experience to draw on now to go into the new room that I knew I was going to be building and going to have to, to uh, set up. And I had all the experience based then to go up there and to do a good job up there. So at, at some point during this video series, uh, I'll, we'll move the camera upstairs and you'll see that room up there. Uh, and this room is become, going to become a uh, pool room and I've got a pool table on order that's coming this week. So I've got to get out of here very shortly, but uh, I'll do as many videos in this series as I can down here. And that system that you see in front of you is going to go up against the wall with the satellite speakers on top of the base speakers. That's where they'll be here after. Uh, and uh, so that's all. I just wanted to share about finally in this, the end of this introduction, my efforts to, to use this space as a kind of a laboratory for room issues. And so I wanted to mention that so uh, you understood that you won't see this again uh, set up like this. We'll be upstairs in a couple of videos. So that's all I have for today. So uh, stay tuned for the next, for part one of uh, my video series on building high fidelity music reproduction system. We'll see you next time.